For those of you who didn't see that, that was on Lifetime Television and aired several times. Lee Grant, the director, wonderful friend of Bella's, did that piece. So without further ado, um, I think we need to introduce uh, several of you who have agreed to speak. Um, I just would like to say that I think Peggy Carey, who was with the U.S. Mission to the U.N., she was here. I don't know if she's still here. Are you here? Okay, I'm going to start introducing people here, and, and Marilyn's going to start. I'm just going to throw out to acknowledge some of you who are here, and then some of you who want to speak will be speaking. So Peggy? I am here. There you are, Peggy Carey from the U.S. Mission. down the list here, and then Greg Dempsey, who's the Second Secretary of Human Rights and Social Affairs at the Permanent Mission of Canada. Where are you, sir? If you could stand up, please. Um, thank you very much, um, everyone. I mean, what this is, this is so incredibly inspirational, and um, I, I work on uh, women's and gender issues for the Canadian Mission to the UN. Uh, it's been a privilege and an honor, especially this year on the 20th anniversary of Beijing, to be working on these issues. Um, you know, the, the legacy of Bella is felt deeply at the UN, and I think that um, we should all just, uh, it, on, on this such a wonderful day, I think we should just all give a round of applause for all the work that's been done for, for this. I think we're I just want to say one other thing about Greg. Um, there is, and I'm going to introduce a little bit, the co-chair of the working group on girls, Emily Bent, who I will introduce in a second. But through her, who is an old colleague and friend of mine, I uh, have gotten to see the Canadian government really support the working group on girls at the UN uh, because Bali, our Bali girls have attended these sessions. So we want to express our thank you to your uh, ambassador, to your representative, I mean, and to your government for doing that. And your work. Your work. But also, before we get into, since it sort of makes logical sense, I'd like to recognize and introduce uh, a very dear friend of mine and a colleague, uh, Emily Bent, who Greg referenced, who is the co-chair of the Working Group on Girls at the UN. Emily? Okay. Um, so I am the co-chair of the Working Group on Girls. I met Liz uh, in 2000. Six or seven. Six, 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 six. Um, we co-organized um, a conference together, and Liz is someone that I I never had the privilege to know Bella, um, but I knew the hats, even though I wasn't supposed to become a feminist as a child. It was sort of not something that our family really talked about, but I always knew that there was this woman out there with this hat. Um, and so it was just sort of this inspiration that I think subversively sunk into my girlhood. And when I met Liz, I really feel like I just met a kindred spirit, a mentor, a friend. Uh, she taught me how to really engage with girls effectively. And we worked on this conference together. We brought girls in and gave them a space to speak. And I just cannot thank you enough for just being amazing. Um, as everyone knows, you also can't say no to Liz. And uh, I think so, you never say no to Bella. <laughs> absolutely. And so I feel like that is something that um, I like to bring to my work. Sort of make it impossible for girls to say no to leadership opportunities. Make it impossible for them to think, no, I couldn't possibly do this, or I couldn't stand up and, and speak for girls' rights or women's rights globally. And so I'm just very happy to be here and Thank you to Bella, thank you to Liz, and to all of the girls who really have added their voice to this movement. Absolutely, thank you, Amy. I can tell you maybe a Bella story I've never heard, um, if that's possible, which is, um, I was um, uh, organizing for International Women's um, Day um, at Kingsborough, which is part of City University, and I got Bella to come. I was so happy. My campus was a little nervous, um, but they were always a little nervous about me. Um, so we're having lunch, and it's Bella and me, and the provost. Well, I was so happy. So the provost, trying to make a conversation, knew I was a Shakespeare professor. So he said, oh, I played 
uh, Petruchio in Much Ado About Nothing. Well, that was the wrong play. So I gently tried, to, you know, not to be rude, but you know, I couldn't let it stand. So Bella says, Ah, oh, you know, Martin, he played Portia. <laughs> I, I work in the working group on girls, too, with Emily. And um, tomorrow is our, our um, 20th or 21st birthday. And so as a communications person, I did a history of the working group of girls. And uh, everyone can see that tomorrow. And of course, I have a wonderful picture of Bella in a pink, pink suit speaking at Beijing. And that Beijing was where we got um, section L, the children's um, section, the girls' section, excuse me. Um, and so there's a whole history of how we did that. Okay, don't have much to say, but I would be remiss uh, looking at Prashanti, who's been the big help. We're part of New York City's, uh, uh, Cities for Seed All, New York City. Sheila Katzman is running it. And let me tell you, it's been so exciting. We have our task force. We have our core group. This is all following your guide. We have our um, organizations, Amnesty International, uh, Black Women's Blueprint, Planned Parenthood. Uh, we're gathering them. Don't worry, I'll stop very soon. Um, it's got to be really soon. <laughs> we're meeting with the city council. We've done a lot of meetings. And we have the framers of the, audience, uh, of the ordinance from Columbia Law School. And if anyone is interested in working on to get CEDAW passed in New York City. And I need to learn from you, Liz, and from the Urban Institute, Black Women's Institute, uh, that has all of the records of when Bella tried to pass it years ago. Absolutely. Right? Thank but if anyone wants to join, um, come join us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I want to um, bring to a mic Kathleen Shaw, who is the uh, co-chair for the Women's Intercultural Network. And is there a mic for Kathleen? Okay. She is a crisis communications um, specialist. She recently worked with um, the Bay Area, Association of Bay Area Governments, and if you think that's not a game to have to <laughs> manage. And um, she, well, okay, go ahead, Kathleen. No. Well, um, she didn't tell me. <laughs> But I'll tell you this, um, I had the real privilege, um, I think, in that last year of Bella. Uh, I, I was really new to the whole issue of women's rights. I've been in very male-dominated positions, uh, first woman, firefighter, that kind of stuff, uh, crisis communication, and did, did not realize the issues until I began to be on the front line and had a chance in 1990, after 1995, when we were doing something in California, looking at putting Beijing on the ground, Bella came to that event. And I, I'd always heard about her, and I, my thought was, she was so inspiring to me because she yelled at me because I was, I was trying to get press and stuff and whatever. But what she yelled at me was, what am I doing? Why am I not getting off and making things much better? And it was, it was very compelling to me. And I work with governments, 101 cities and nine counties, all the local electives. I work, I'm very subversive. I work with them in making sure, because I deal with legislation, that we deal with women's issues, not over here. They never know what hits them half the time, because I bring it up over and over again. The cities for CEDAW, we've been working on that without them knowing it for quite some time. I just retired, so now I can really <laughs> Tovar, are you hearing that? Yes, uh, from the chair of WIDU, the Women's Environment and Development Organization. <laughs> Present chair is Bridget Burns, who's the director of Ad advocacy from WIDU, and then I have some other WIDU family, but go ahead. And I'm one of the lucky women to 
you know, uh, enjoy today the legacy that Bella left for, for me and many others. I uh, came to Wheel more than 10 years ago, right, June. And uh, I, as many Latin women, I didn't know who Bella was. And when I walked into Widow and saw the picture and those hats, I thought, I mean, how could this woman with those hats could have read my mind and my heart and my dreams being so far away? And uh, since then, Widow has been my home and the home for many of us where we uh, and I, especially with the support of Bridget, Eleanor, June, Liz, and many others that are not here, Irene, Monique, uh, keep struggling for uh, our dreams, for the equality between men and women, for the empowerment of women, and as Bella used to say, uh, for a healthy and peaceful planet for all of us.